So we go back to the word of God here. The word of God tells us that we're to leave the world and cling to the Lord and cling to the church. Come out from among them and be separate. You in the African American world, you in the Native American world, you in the settlership world, you who is international, come out from among them once you have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. Come out from among them and be free, Paul says. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I believe, He says, do not be bound together with unbelievers. How am I going to submit to Gabriel sexually if the word of God tells me do not be bound together with unbelievers? She's an unbeliever. How am I going to submit to an African-American as number two if the word of God tells me do not be bound together with unbelievers? How am I going to submit to John MacArthur as a slave and a subjugate if the word of God tells me, do not be bound together with unbelievers. How am I going to submit to the LGBTQ day and night, night and day, having intercourse with males, not the females of my choice, when the word of God tells you, do not be bound together with unbelievers. What partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? What fellowship has light with darkness? What harmony has Christ with Belial? What has a believer in common with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from their midst and be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean. And I will welcome you. I will be a father to you. You shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. How can I turn my life over back to unbelievers when God just snatched me out of the life of unbelieving? How can I go and give myself back over to the unbelieving world that's heading for hell, that's heading for death, when God says you need to come out from among these people. Now I began by giving you a short testimony that I've been burned by this Haitian family. They brought me here, not because they were trying to help my family, but because they were representing the Windsors through the community. They want sex, they want submission, they want slavery. The MacArthur's didn't introduce themselves until 10, until 10 years after I had, moved, had, had lived into this country. They thought perhaps I would become one of their subjugates, one of their slaves. Of course, they're not in my face, but they're in the background, manipulating and controlling. That's why I'm still doing the tent thing and outside with the preaching. They don't support the ministry. They don't support the fellowship. Anything that involves me. But they'll stand with Gabriel in the back as long as she continues to pursue me for sex and submission and keeps me out of the seminary and keeps me out of my life, the life that the American government had once given to me, but now has turned into a lie. The life where I was able to work and provide a home for myself, which now has become a lie. The life where I used to go to school, postgraduate school, where now it has become a lie. So God says, come out from among them. They're not going to accept you. Come out from among them. They're going to persecute you. Why? All those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall be persecuted. Why do you, in the American society and the unbelieving world, persecute the church, look down on the church, demand slavery from the church, sex from the church, and when you don't get that sex, you begin to spank the church 
burn the church, blow up the church, and kill the church. Was it not a few years ago that an African church was gunned down by a young man named Ruth? How many other incidents since that time have occurred with African churches that have not been noted? Why do you, the unbelieving, hate the church so much? So much so that you have encouraged this Haitian woman, put her on an intercom, demanded for her to come out on us when you know that God, what does God say in the scriptures concerning sexual immorality? When you go into the book of Thessalonians, what does Paul say to the church of Thessalonica? In, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, he says to the church of Thessalonica, Finally then, brethren, we request and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us instruction as to how you ought to walk and please God, just as you actually do walk, that you excel still more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. That is that you abstain from sexual immorality. When I was in the store at FedEx, they were suggesting that I turn to the sex sites. In the back of my mind, I thought, well, why would I want to do that? When God is calling us to come out from among them, and God is calling us to be sanctified. This is the will of God, your sanctification, church. That is that you abstain from sexual immorality, church. Wasn't it just the other day I stood here and read to you 1 Corinthians 6? 1 Corinthians 6, and I spoke to you regarding the, the issue of sex, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where it says that it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, an immorality of such a kind as does not exist even among the Gentiles, that someone has his father's wife, and they have become arrogant as a, as a result of this instead of mourning. And Paul says, the one who has done this, this deed of having sex with his stepmother ought to be removed. Such a one had to be judged. And Paul says, in his mind, he has already judged such a man. For if it was up to him, he would have turned him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, but for the preservation of the soul. And when you go into 1 Corinthians 6, what does it say? Right? We looked at two passages. In chapter, it says, food is for the stomach in verse 13, and the stomach is for food, but God will do away with both of them. Yet the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. In verse 18 of chapter 6, 1 Corinthians, he says, flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. He says, church, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and that you are not your own, for you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. We are to glorify God in our bodies. Why? because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are saved, we have been bought with a price. And what was that price? The price of blood. And we went into Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter nine, verse 22, the scripture says, and according to the law, one may almost say all things are cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. When you read verse 28 of Hebrews chapter 9, he says, So Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. He offered himself once for sins. 
Where are we going that this gospel needs to be preached? Where are we going that the issue of sin needs to be addressed? Where are we going? What is it that our lives are coming up with? What's coming up in our lives? Not a brand new baby, but the termination of our lives. We're looking at the beginning when we look at an infant. We're not even thinking about the end. We're all in the same boat, going in the same direction. Isn't this the direction that God said we're all going in? No matter what you accomplish, no matter what you own, isn't this the direction that God has set for us? I mean, as sad as it is that I have to open this up, but are we not all going into this direction? Isn't this the direction? I mean, the second chapter of Genesis, chapter 17, I mean, the relationship with God hasn't even begun. And we're hit with this factor that you shall surely die. It is for this reason. God has given us this gospel. Here, basic instructions before leaving earth. You're gonna need this before you go because this is where we're all going. Whether you own everything that's in my storage, whether you own every country that's in the globe, whether you own every man and every woman as a slave, whether you're worth trillions, billions, or zillions, it doesn't matter how many crowns you have in your closet. If you have a crown for every single day of the year, if you have a scepter for every single day of the year, if you have a robe that's 10, 15, 20 miles long, it doesn't make a difference. God says this is where you're going. It doesn't matter if you marry a white woman, a black woman, a white male, a black male, it doesn't matter who you're married, this is where it ends. So why do we sit there and we bitterly judge one another, destroy one another, discriminate against each other? Why not take God at his word and humble ourselves before the Almighty and change the course of our lives? Make something out of the life that you've been given. Instead of tripping people up and considering it to be a game, pissing people off when you don't need to, why not do what God has said and preserve your soul from hell and from the lake of fire, which is the second death? If you wanna give your life to Christ, and that means MacArthur and Franklin and anybody else involved, those people that are in the background of the computer that likes to control the, the internet. If you want to give your life to Christ, today is your day of salvation. By faith, speak to your heavenly Father. Speak to God and say, God, forgive me for my sin. God, I repent of my sin. Can we all say that? God, I repent of my hate. I repent of my jealousies. I repent of my lust. I repent of my violence. I repent of my discrimination. I repent of my enslaving others. I repent of taking off all of my clothes so the whole world could see how beautiful I am underneath. I repent of my hypocrisy. I repent of my greed for money. Whatever your sin is, why not deal with it this way in the eyes of God before it becomes this? Why not deal with it this way before it becomes this? Pray this prayer, mean the prayer, and God will forgive you of your sin. Father, I repent of my sin. Father, grant me your forgiveness through Christ Jesus grant me your grace and your mercy today bless me with your Holy Spirit of promise in Jesus name Amen
God, I pray for those people who have prayed in their hearts, even if they didn't say the same words that I have said. I pray for the seed of salvation that has been planted in them, these verses of your word, that you would cause them to repent and become your son and your daughter in Christ Jesus, your holy church. For without the Holy Spirit, Paul says, they are not yours. And I cannot give them the Holy Spirit, only you can. I cannot pray with them to receive something that you're not willing to give to them if their hearts are not humble before you or repentant before you. And this I pray in Jesus' name, amen.